So I want to talk about layers for a little bit. As an intermediate level designer, I'm really trying to use layers to make things, make life a lot more simple. So you'll notice how I'm taking particular categories of objects, like in this case, the iPad base, and putting it on its own layer and locking it. So if I ever just needed to move around this portion right here, I have it on its own layer. So don't be afraid of using layers to make life easy for you when you try to select specific objects. So let's put on our isometric grid and let's line this up on the platform a little nicer. So now the next thing I want to do is I want to be able to add a, a, a deeper sense of depth by adding shadows. We don't want to add super strong shadows, just really subtle shadows to bring out the fact that this is a layered design that we're showing and it's not just static and flat. So here's kind of some simple ways to add some shadows. So let's start off with this first area. So we're going to select this button. Let's make sure this button is grouped together. It's going to group some of these elements together. These are the original. And these can even be on separate layers to make it easier to grab. So I'm just kind of grouping all of these elements together so this whole thing is selected and grouped. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hold down Option and drag. I'm just making a copy. And I'm going to make it all a black swatch. So it's all just a black swatch. And I might need to take off that stroke. So now we're just created a dark copy. And I don't think I'm going to need that play button. So I'm just going to erase that. We're just trying to get a background for our shadow. This makes it easier than hand drawing the shadow. So now that we have that, we need to reduce this quite a bit. We also need to add a little bit of blurring to it, kind of soften that shadow. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a Gaussian blur. I'm going to go down to blur. I'm going to go down to blur, Gaussian blur. We're just going to do a very slight blurring here. Let's try 6.2 perhaps. We can always go back and change it. And we're going to go and reduce our transparency quite a bit to make it very, very soft. So maybe even just 8%. We're just really looking to cast a little bit of shadow behind it. So let's bring it back here and we're going to put it behind this layer. So I'm just going to do command left bracket as my little keyboard shortcut and put it behind the shadow. So now we can come in here and we can cast this shadow downward and to the left. And we have to be consistent with our shadows. So if we cast this down and to the left, all shadows in the isometric design need to go downward and to the left. So we're committing to that being where the shadow is being cast. And of course, the more distance you add with the shadow, the more dramatic distance you create between the object. So that would be a much bigger distance, or you can have a tighter distance by bring it, bringing it closer to the object. And at any time, we can bring out the shadow more, so we could do 12%. And so see kind of the difference between the top? And let me see if I can't just bring this up just a little more and out and over. You can see the difference between the top and the bottom, how the top looks a lot more 3D. It's definitely got more of that layered look. So that's exactly what we're trying to go for. Since this is already going to be the same shape all the way down, I can just duplicate this. Voila. So we can also do that with our icon here. This just looks like a flat icon. This has a little stroke on it to give it that cool metallic look to it. So just kind of showing you I added a white stroke to that. Let's do a drop shadow. We can even do a drop shadow directly on the layer. Or we could do what we did before, we would just copy the object, make it black, and blur it. But you notice you don't have quite as much control over direction like you would if you were to manually create the shadow. So you could definitely do this, and we're able to project it backwards. But I think it's almost better to stick with what we did before. I just wanted to show you the other way you could do it. So let's make it black. And for this case, we may need to remove the photo. So I'm going to click on the photo. Just using the direct selection tool to access the photo and remove that. And let's make that a fill. So now we just got a filled shape. Let's do a Gaussian blur. And let's reduce the transparency to what we had. I think we did 12. Got to be consistent with our shadows. So let's, if we used 12 before, let's use 12 again. And now I just have way more control over shadow casting. So now what's missing is we don't have a lot of dynamic lighting happening on our platform. So we need, this is going to cast a shadow, the iPad and the 
layout is going to be popping out and casting a shadow. So how do we do realistic shadows with isometric design? Let's go ahead and toggle on our grid. And we're going to hand draw some shadows because we're not going to be able to duplicate this whole iPad and do the same thing we did in the front. Because if we did that, we'd have this big block of shadow. But really, if we have the lighting source coming this way, coming down, and it's creating that highlight here, and it's casting shadows outward, we want to have kind of a skinnier, more narrow shadow. We're going to hand draw that. It's going to get paint or do a black shape. And I'm going to cast two shadows, one that's going to be the iPad and one that's going to be the popping out sheet. I'm just going to create a long rectangle. That'll be our shadow. We're going to do a Gaussian blur. Maybe make that a little bit more dramatic of a blur. And we're going to send this backwards into the layering system. And this is when we can reduce the transparency to give it more of a subtle shadow look. And that's that one. And we can always duplicate this, make it a little more narrow. And now we're going to make the second shadow for the bottom that's going to be cast down from the paper. And we might need to just change the length with the direct selection tool, just trying to create that little sense of realism because these things are naturally, these are kind of floating. So this is given the effect that it's floating. And the more distance you put between the objects, the more, the higher the floating is. And the tighter it is, the closer to the plane, the ground plane that you're on. So we can even add more depth to our gradient here. Right now we just have a two-tone gradient. We have a darker blue and a lighter blue, but we can always add more color by adding, just right here in my gradient panel, just adding even more lighting here. And what would be interesting is, see how I'm adding a little bit of a warm tone, a little bit of a pink? kind of gives an interesting lighting perspective there, just added. So all I did was add a little pink at the end of that gradient. And it kind of really changed the lighting dynamics and made the top surface look a little bit more reflective. Just those little tiny things you can do to make your design a little bit better.